In this video, we're going to go over length, dot products, and vector properties. Um, and we'll, I'll show you how to do a unit vector as well. So first, we'll, uh, we'll start off um, with length. So you've got your two vectors here in column form. And so let's try graphing these quickly. So we've got our x and our y axis, and we're going to need a z axis too. So you point your fingers in the direction of x, curl to y, your thumb points in the direction of the z axis. So z should be coming out or towards you. And so in mathematical terminology, the uh, we'll just we'll look at how to get the length of uh, vector v here. So the length or the displacement or the magnitude, and we denote magnitude with these two lines on either side, is equal to well, uh, it's just the exact same as Pythagoras theorem. So it's going to be equal to the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. So the magnitude or the length of v will be equal to negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is just going to be 1 plus 1 plus 9, so it will be the square root of 11. So that's going to be your magnitude. And so let, let's actually graph that now. So, so v will be, oops, I guess that should be over a little bit more, to be a little more consistent. So it's going to be negative x uh, up 1 on the y-axis, and then 3 on the z-axis, which is always hard to, uh, to do, but we'll say it comes out 1, 2, 3, about here. So from standard position we come out, so that's going to be your, your vector v right there. And that, <laughs> that funny symbol is actually just an, an arrow, or supposed to be look like an arrow. And uh, so yeah, so that's how you'd get the length of v, so this distance here is the square root of 11 from there, from the, the tail to the head or from the initial point to the terminal point. And so, uh, now let's look at how you'd get a, a unit vector for this. So, there's actually three unit vectors on here. So for the x direction, we have the i hat unit vector, the y direction, we've got j hat, and the z axis, we have k hat. And all that means is, so, your unit vector i hat is, I just drew it right there. So just means a uh, length of 1 in the direction of the x-axis. So if you had 2i hat, you'd just multiply 2 times this vector, and it would take you out here. If you had 3i hat, you'd multiply 3 times your vector i hat here, and it would take you out here. And so j hat means is this vector, and k hat is this vector right here. And so we want to find um, a unit vector for v here, and we denote that with the funny little hat. It's uh, the common terminology, and it's going to be equal to your your vector v over the magnitude uh, vector v. But the actual way you would write this, because there is actually a, you can't divide with vectors, so you'd actually write it as one over v times your your vector v is, is the more proper way to actually technically write it. And so we've already worked out our magnitude for v, so we have this term. So v hat is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 11 times vector v. And this is going to be, well, we just put in the components now. We'll work in column form still, so negative 1, uh, the y component is 1, and the z component is 3. So it's just like multiplying a scalar again. So it's going to be 
you know, vector v hat and the direction of v. So all we're doing is we're finding a unit vector for v. So it has a length of one. And if we multiplied it by two, we'd get out this distance. Multiplied it by three, we'd get out there. But uh, so, so one over there, the uh, square root of 11 times negative one. So it's going to be negative one over the square root of 11. And then we're going to have one over for the y axis, one over square root of 11. Finally, for the z axis, uh, it's just three times one over square root of 11. So we'll have three over the square root of 11. And that will be our unit vector. And uh, you know, if you were to plug this back into uh, Pythagoras theorem, you would actually find out that you'd have one over root 11 squared plus one over root 11 squared plus three over root 11 squared. And this would be equal to one. So all we're saying is we found the unit vector with the length of one in the direction of v. So now to get into the, the dot product. Um, so dot product u dot v, just to note by this little dot. And it's also called the scalar product because the result of a dot product is just a scalar, not a vector. A cross product will give you a, a vector out but dot product will just give you a, a scalar root. So in this case, we have 3, negative 2, 1, dot, negative 1, 1, 3. And it's a pretty simple operation, so we just multiply the components and then add them. So 3 times negative 1 plus, well, now let's look at the y component, so negative 2, times 1 plus, and look at the z component, 1 times 3. So this is equal to negative 3, negative 2, plus 3. 3's will cancel, so the dot product of u dot v is negative 2. So there's a, it's pretty, uh, Pretty straightforward just to, to do the dot product. Uh, I recommend running through a couple examples, but uh, briefly I just want to touch on some important properties. So I'll section off this little area. So, okay, so first off, u dot v, and these are all vectors, is equal to v dot u. Uh, there's only four of them this time, so don't worry, it's not uh, like there's eight in the previous examples. So u dot v plus w, and uh, these are all vectors here, is equal to u dot v plus u dot w. So just think of regular algebra, you know, foil it out, multiply it out. Uh, the third property is we have a scalar c times vector u uh, dot v, and you can do this because you know scalar times a vector will leave you with a vector. And for the dot product, you always need two vectors. So this is equal to just take the scalar out front u dot v, and if you run through a couple examples, just invent some vectors. You'll see this is true. And then the fourth one, the final one is u dot u is always greater than or equal to zero. Um, and also that, you know, I just take this little bit on the end as well. So u dot u, you get a bonus one, is equal to zero if and only if, uh, this if with two f's here is just if and only if, u equals zero. So in this case, uh, it's uh, cumulative. Uh, here it's just distributive. Here, just bring the scalar out, and uh, u dot u is greater than or equal to zero. I recommend doing some problems. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just plug in some numbers, and you will see that. All right, see you in the next video.